You guys, this is absolutely 100% bonkers. First of all, welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Take a listen to this. Take this into account right now, an individual or a couple who are looking to make a big purchase or should you try to time it and wait it out? Uh, you should move faster. You should move faster. She's advising to Americans as far as purchasing one of the biggest financial transactions of their life, a home. So basically this was an interview done by Barbara Corcoran, who's basically some massive New York investor in real estate and she's on the shark tank. Now here's the big, big thing about her. She has something that I like to call a safety net, probably millions and millions and millions of dollars. She's probably the top 0.0001%. So I'm going to analyze you guys what she's been telling to Americans and why she's wrong and that it is not a good time to buy real estate. Let's listen right now to the rest of what she has to say. It's to be roaring back and I'm wondering if, if people should really take this into account right now, an individual or a couple who are looking to make a big purchase, or should you try to time it and wait it out? Uh, you should move faster uh, because houses are only getting more expensive. Uh, it's harder to get your hands on something that you even find acceptable to live with, never mind something you've been dreaming about. Interest rates are still low, although they've been creeping up and they have promised to continue to go up. And so there's nothing to be gained by waiting whatsoever. There's nothing to be gained by waiting? Are you serious? How about a good deal on a house that you love? Now, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm an opinion sharer, but I'm also a realtor in Houston, Texas, and a loan officer in Texas. Now, as far as what to gain, how about not getting trapped in your home if your home goes upside down in equity? Again, how about finding something that you like or you love at a good deal, at a good price? How about the safety of knowing that you're not going to be trapped in your home? because you purchase during a cool down or a correction or depending on the metro area, a crash. How about those reasons for a gain? Look at this graph. Okay, this is Fred Economic. And as you can see here, look at the decline in 2007 peak. So here's the peak in 2007 right here. Here is basically the bottom. So when we had a uh, housing market crash back in 2008, home prices for median homes went down over 20%, okay? So fast forward, here we are right here, we have a giant year over year equity growth for homes. So naturally there's generally gonna be a correction and it is a not the right time to buy. You have a lot to gain by waiting. Let's continue with what she's advising people right now. So if you weren't smart enough to get into the market two years ago, a year ago, the idea right now is get into it as fast as you can if you really want a home. And beyond the home front, I think it's probably the best market I have ever seen for real estate investing. It's the best market you've ever seen for real estate investing. Have you ever heard of Zillow? Take a look here. Remember this article from Zillow. Is Zillow going to crash the housing market? Zillow's iBuying exit spooked market watchers. Zillow officially exited the iBuyer market late last year, taking a $421 million loss in the process. I guess for Zillow, a big institutional investor, it's actually not the best time to invest. Be careful what she's saying. Let's go on and listen to her some more. I think the, uh, the return on investment is phenomenal and has been in so many markets in so many cities throughout the, throughout the US that it's almost, I don't wanna say it can't go wrong, but it's probably the best market I've ever seen in my life. So I think real estate is a champion. And I'm not saying that because that's my gig. She's not just saying that because it's her gig. Come on, who believes that? Now, remember what I'm saying. She is a massive, massive safety net. She has mil millions of dollars more than likely to invest in real estate and she can hold for the long term. She also probably doesn't have a lot of consumer debt. So unless you have a no consumer debt, a whole bunch of money, and you have that mindset where you're going to hold on to the property for seven to 10 years, and it's okay to have a potential equity loss, then by all means, move forward. But there's a lot of us not like that, but I'm sure she's not just saying that because it's her gig. Let's continue. Because I invest in a lot of stuff, but I'm saying it because I've never seen it more tantalizing and with more promise. Yeah, I want to pick up on that last point, which is real estate is an investment, not your home per se, but I guess you're talking about like a rental property or something like that. Rental property or a building with five or six units or 20 units. The numbers there, the returns people are getting are really surprising. She's not just saying that, though, because it's just her gig. 
Do y'all see why you have to be super careful listening to this very, very influential person? It drives me crazy when someone with great influence say, says these things because they don't specify why they're giving that advice. She's essentially giving good advice if you're a multimillionaire and you want to invest in real estate. Talk to the majority of people like myself that we have a, maybe a little bit of savings, great credit worthiness, right? We're not multimillionaires that can afford to do things like this. Anyways, I'm sorry. Let's continue. Well, why is that exactly? So in other words, because there's such demand and the rates are still low enough to make your cost of capital still pretty good? A few reasons. One, there was a shyness in the market. Uh, people were slow to respond to investment real estate. Uh, now everybody's... How was there a rest period and how were people slow? We got locked down. We were forced on lockdown because of COVID. There was no rest period. Let's keep going. Jumping into it, but it kind of lag behind all other kinds of investments. So you had a little rest period. Secondly, um, the rents have been going up nationally. Yes, rent has been going up nationally, but not as high as mortgage payments. And that's why right now it's such a crazy time. Most places or many places, it is more, way more expensive to own than it is to rent. Let's keep going. And if you choose your properties carefully, like if you're investing, say, in Orlando, uh, rents are up almost 30 percent. Crazy. OK, so picture what that does to the bottom line. And very importantly, which we all take for granted, like our right to breathe, uh, money's so cheap. And so you can leverage really high. So so I, I even in New York City, which has gone through a really tough period because of all the changes. Albany that make it really almost untenable to make money here as an investor. A lot of people have stopped buying. They've moved their money elsewhere. Because money is so cheap. But right now we have surging interest rates. Now, I will say that I believe that if you're looking to buy or you're renting or even if you want to sell that building your credit worthiness is very important because a lot of times you can invest in real estate by leveraging your debt. So you want outstanding credit so that you can get what she's kind of referring to, which is mortgage debt to invest in real estate. But you guys, here's my overall opinion on what people should do. Just wait a little bit. Okay. Wait three to six months. Historically, we are fixing to get more inventory as far as listings coming to the market. When we hit spring and summer months, we now have foreclosures going into the market. And despite what she's saying, we have less investor demand plus new home builds. So we have a lot of things going on right now that would probably be make it to be in your best interest to hold out a little bit longer and find something that you love. Better no deal than a bad deal. But regardless, guys, I wish you guys luck out there and I hope you win.